And you can see my screen? Yes. Okay, the slide, sir. Right? Yes, yes, it's clear. That's perfect. Okay, when we are ready, just tell me. Let me show you the sound is clear, right? الصوت واضح وكله تمام. You can start. Okay. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. My name is Hassan Al Yusuf. I'm gonna talk about utilizing simulation for training for pediatric airway management for COVID-19 patient. As you remember, we passed it through a difficult time. Uh, during COVID and there was a lot of discussion how to deal with these patients, how to intubate them, how to extubate them as you know that it's very highly infectious virus. So from that, uh, that's reason we worked hard on uh, conducting uh, simulation courses on uh, how to protect the physician or practitioner during intubation and extubation. So the novel uh, coronavirus uh, 19 can be transmitted to clinician involved in their care, particularly during aerosol generating procedures such as endotracheal intubation and extubation. And the objective was to demonstrate COVID-19 specific steps for per personal protection equipment, PPE, for donning and for doffing, and plus the procedure of intubation and extubation procedure to prevent transmission of infection to care provider and utilizing simulation mannequins for these uh, tasks. The method, it was multidisciplinary in situ, simulation training courses uh, were conducted concentrating on pediatric airway management for suspected or confirmed COVID-19 patient. Initially, uh, the courses were repeated several times during the day uh, with the distance precautions, but uh, later on when the uh, COVID-19 was really increasing and the risk was very high, we decided to uh, use the same simulation scenario. We videotaped it and was presented as online presentation uh, through different media for more safety and to distribute the knowledge as fast as possible because it was really very risky virus. Um, um, any, threatening uh, the physicians or the uh, medical practitioner as a nurse, as RT, as a physician. So also what we did is that we put a guideline for airway management of confirmed or suspected COVID-19 pediatric patient. And with that guideline, we added like a barcode to show the video demonstration for the procedure to make it much easy for people to watch the video anytime they want. And this is the example of the CPG uh, or the clinical practice guideline. And at the end, we put like a barcode here. Uh, they can just um, uh, screenshot that and they will uh, be watching the video itself. Uh, I'm going first uh, to show you about what we were concentrating during the course. Uh, first, we were discussing about the personal protective equipment. Uh, we have like a personnel inside the room. Uh, who will be inside the room? There will be one medical doctor uh, trained and experienced in intubation. We have one expert nurse and one respiratory care practitioner who's senior and can manage the airway very well. You don't need like uh, people who just trained to, to go into this phase. All these uh, three person, they should wear like fluid resistance gowns, either clean or sterile gown. Uh, N95 respirator, uh, they should have done the fit test uh, earlier. And then the Google or face shield were uh, to be utilized. And remember that personal glasses were not substitute for the goggles. Uh, gloves, either one pair or two pair, uh, shoe cover and head and neck cover for all these three people who's going inside uh, to the patient. Outside room, we have like the anti room uh, or can consider as if you have two meters away from the patient. Uh, we have here to have four people, 
One of them is the one medical doctor. He's the team leader who's gonna uh, guide and uh, lead the team who are inside the room, okay? But he will be in the ante room, outside the room. One expert nurse and one monitor person versus chest compression if needed. Uh, and she, he should be like competent with the pulse. You have one runner nurse to get the medication or uh, anything required. All these uh, people who are in the ante room, they should wear like a yellow gown, surgical mask and gloves. These uh, what we were trained on. Uh, we follow the CDC guideline, uh, like putting on uh, for the donning, uh, putting on the gown first and then the mask or the respirator and followed by the Google or the fa uh, face shield and ended with the wearing the gloves, sterile gloves or non-sterile, it doesn't necessarily to be sterile. Uh, we teach them about uh, passive pre-oxygenation for intubation that there should be no bagging as much as they can. They can use the lowest flow necessary to achieve an oxygen saturation of 90%, nasal bronchs maximum of four liter or non rebreather mask maximum of 15 liter. Then we cover the patient with a transparent plastic sheet before utilizing the bag valve uh, mask ventilation with the beep valve should be connected also and with a viral filter. Please, the viral filter is very, very important to remember whenever you deal with a suspected or confirmed case of COVID-19. And this, uh, the key aspect of the technique is to minimize the chance of uh, aerosolization by using or leaking by using VE to handle grip, as you can see where it show you very excellent uh, grip and uh, avoid using the CE. This is what we usually use in the regular intubation uh, for normal, uh, for other uh, patients, but for COVID patient, we recommend to have a VE that will have a very good seal. This is what we train also during the simulation course. Important point we emphasize during this simulation course is on place an oral airway if needed to improve oxygenation. And if the patient was unconscious, of course, to avoid gagging and vomiting. If the patient is conscious or semi-conscious to place a nasopharyngeal tube. Use a catheter mount to be at a distance from the patient. This is what I mean by catheter mount, to be in a distance from the patient himself to avoid infection with a COVID-19 and avoid open suction as much as possible. And you can appreciate here the plastic nylon sheet covers. Okay, for the pre-medication uh, for uh, COVID-19 or suspected COVID-19, we usually encourage to use paralysis to suppress the coughing and vomiting to decrease the uh, uh, resolution of the infection. Prepare at least two doses of each medication which was ordered by the physician and prepare sedation and drug infusion for immediate full sedation after intubation. For the type of the medication, you can use any medication that you use in intubating any other child. Uh, atropine for toddler and below to avoid the vasovagal um, response, uh, to avoid vagal response. Sedation, you can use ketamine that has sedation and analgesia. Uh, sedative by itself, you can use either midazolam, propofol is a good choice. Analgesia can go for fentanyl or also ketamine. And paralysis, as I mentioned, it's recommended to reduce the coughing and vomiting. Uh, the protected intubation, we, uh, we instruct them during the course to keep the patient fully covered with a transparent plastic sheet, which we say the nylon. Uh, proceed with a rapid sequence induction with a pre-medication and paralysis. Uh, use cuffed ET tube and prepare the proper size and smaller size. And you can use the equation where age divided by four plus four for two years patient and above. Start intubation only when the patient is fully paralyzed to avoid coughing and vomiting, as we mentioned, and preferably to use the McIntosh video laryngoscope as possible and visualize the ATT passing between the two cords to, that will confirm that you are in or the AT tube is in. This is uh, a photo of how to do the video laryngoscope. Uh, after intubation, it's very important we instruct on these points because it's uh, valid remove the stylet and then directly clamp the ATT. Inflate the cuff of the ATT and then connect it to the back vas, uh, mask uh, ventilation or to a ventilator, but with a viral filter. There should be a viral filter. After you make the connection, now you can declamp the ATT. 
So these tips are really, really very valid and we concentrate on it during the simulation course. Avoid manual back to confirm position of the ATT and use entitled CO2 for a confirmation. Plus you already visualize the ATT going in through, uh, through the video learning scope. Avoid auscultation with stethoscope. And before starting ventilator, please make sure that the ATT cuff is inflated. You have to inflate it. And the circuit of the ventilator machine is well connected without any leakage because that will uh, limit the, the, uh, the infection spreading of the infection. Okay, well, where do you do doffing? Now we finish the procedure and it's time to take off the, all the uh, soiled gowns which we were using. Uh, we teach them also on, uh, on the way of doffing that remove the soiled gown, gloves, and shoe cover in the patient room, standing at least two meter away from the patient. Then ask the, um, then take the hair cover and the goggle and the mask in 95 off in the ante room. If you don't have an ante room, then take everything off except the N95 mask and the hair cover uh, off in the room, at least two meter from the patient. Take your N95 off outside the patient room as it's your most important defense against respiratory infection when you are exposed to the patient. So please, this is very important. Sometimes though, the room is so small, you cannot possibly uh, have two meter away from the patient. In that case, you can have uh, to doff outside the room and clean that area where you doff and uh, afterward, they can clean it. This again, the CDC that we are following uh, during the doffing, start removing the soiled gloves, uh, followed by the Google or the face shield, and then the gown and the uh, mask or the respirator and wash your hands and sterilize it at the end. So in summary for the, uh, the the uh, the instruction for uh, during the course where we have few do's and few don'ts. Uh, does, uh, does uh, include do manage the patient in negative pressure room if available, do accept lower oxygenation goal at lower flows, do slow down to ensure you and your team are safe, don't rush for intubation while you're not well protected, do limit personnel in the room for three as we mentioned, do ensure all connections are secured and there is no leak, do wait for more than 15 minutes after intubation to take a portable chest x-ray. Do use two hand vise uh, grip, as we mentioned, uh, using VE. Clamp, please, the IT tube before disconnecting the ventilator or the back valve uh, mask, okay? And do close suctioning as much as possible. Don't, we, uh, we always say, don't delay intubation if in doubt. Don't rush donning and doffing or aerosolization prevention measure. Don't use VIBAB high flow nasal cannula whenever possible. If possible, avoid them. Don't use nebulizers. Uh, don't employ positive pressure ventilation before the cuff is inflated. Please inflate the cuff first and then you go for the uh, positive pressure. Do not sculptate to confirm the tube placement and don't bag the patient unless it's uh, necessary. Uh, I will go here and show like um, uh, a video of uh, how we do this, uh, the intubation itself. If you allow me. Okay, where is it? It was here. And it's supposed to be here. Just let me, let me check it, please. No, that's for the extubation. Okay, can you see my uh, movie? This is a movie on uh, how to do the process of intubation.
My name is Sosan Ali Yusuf. I'm a pediatric intensivist. I'm here to acknowledge the nation inside to in pediatric intensive care. We develop this simulation scenario in order to prepare healthcare providers to handle uh, COVID-19 patients, pediatric patients, and that's aiming to decrease the risk of infection. Mohammed Al Hassani, I am pediatric ICU consultant, and my role will be the team leader for the group in this simulation. My name is Adil Al-Jabab. I am a third, a third year fellow. I'll be responsible for the air. I'm Karen Karan, a pediatric ICU nurse. I will be the ICU team. I'm Dr. Mohammed Hashim. I am responsible for monitoring the risk. My name is Sandra Nizi. I am a respiratory therapist. Okay, guys, what we're doing here is a five-year-old boy admitted to the emergency room department. He presented with shortness of breath, respiratory death stress, and he has been close contact with human to our COVID positive patient. Okay, he's five years old from the child. So he's really, really sick and he needs your help to manage his illness. I'm Victor Mohammed and I will be the team leader. Uh, Victor Mohammed can be the monitor guy. Thank you so much. Karen, can you handle the IP access and IP medication? Yes, sir. Thank you. Hadi. Can you be the airway manager? Yes, I can. Do you have, are you experienced in intubating children? I am. Thank you. Dr. Hadid, can you assess the airway and assess for me the respiration of the patient? Uh, the child is pitchetnic and he's doing something as well. With okay. attractions. As a guy, what is the uh, answer? Five year old child, he's tachycardic for 30 per minute and he's asymptic. Saturation is 39%. Blood pressure. Blood pressure is 120, 80 and respiratory rate is 50. Okay, guys, we are dealing with the patient who has COVID-19 uh, suspected case, and we are in clear hypoxic respiratory failure, and the plan will go ahead for intubation. So what I want from both of you, please, can you maintain a good seal that's to minimize the spread of the infection? The last, let's try to avoid the bagging also to minimize the spread of infection. If we're able to re-oxygenate him with good ceiling, that will be a good. If not, we'll start back mass ventilation. Monitor guide, how is the saturation now? Saturation is 88%. I think the ceiling is good. And the saturation increases? Yes, it is improved from 80 to 88. Thank you so much. So, Ms. Karen, can you very well the sedation for the intubation? And I need from you propofol 1 milligram per kg is 20 kg, so 20 milligram of propofol and 0.1 milligram per kg of cisacracolium, which is 2 milligram of cisacracolium. Thank you. So, Dr. Hadid, sedation and paralysis has been given to the patient. Can you proceed, please? Uh, uh, go ahead and intubate the patient if he is not moving. Okay. If the patient is not moving, he's fully sedated and paralyzed, I will intubate the patient. Go ahead. And uh, we are doing this as a rapid sequence induction. Can I have a Heart rate is good, more than the infection. Heart rate is 130 per minute and saturation is 96. Tube is in. Thank you. I will move the silent partially, clamp the tube before removing it totally to minimize the spread of secretions and infection. Size can you please pull the silent? Heart rate 125 per minute, saturation 98%. Thank you everybody for intubation, the patient successfully. These are the dues. As we mentioned, we do accept lower oxygen call at lower flows as much as possible. Do slow down to ensure that you and your team are safe. It's very important. Do limit personnel in the room to three if possible. Do excellent seal by using VE grip as we show in the movie. Do keep the patient fully covered with the uh, transparent sheet or the nylon sheet. Do proceed with a rapid sequence induction with pre-medication and paralysis to avoid coughing and uh, vomiting. Do use coughed ETT tube, it's very important. 
and we use the Macintosh visual scope as possible to visualize the ATT passing between the vocal cords. Do clamp the ATT before disconnecting the back valve mask ventilation and then connect it to the uh, ventilator. Do inflate the ATT cuff and declamp the, the uh, ATT. Use a viral filter all the time, please, for these patients. Do avoid manual bagging to confirm position of the ATT tube. You don't need to do that. Do use uh, entitled CO2 to confirm tracheal intubation. And do before starting ventilation, please make sure that the pilot ballooning is inflated and it's not uh, damaged. Do close system suctioning as much as you can. The don't uh, point, we have several don't points. Like uh, don't delay intubation if in doubt. Don't rush donning and doffing or aerolization prevention measures. Take your time and be sure that you are safe. Don't use bi-bib or high flow nasal cannula whenever possible. And avoid using nebulizers as much as you can. Don't employ positive pressure ventilation before the cuff is inflated. It's very important, guys. Don't sculptate to confirm tube placement. All these points, we concentrate on it during the course. Don't bag the patient unless it's really necessary. These are our uh, references. I'll go back to my, uh, to my uh, presentation. I need to share. Okay. So now we're going to talk about uh, extubation. Also, the same way we use the, uh, the uh, simulator uh, mannequins to demonstrate uh, for the uh, practitioner on how to do a safe uh, extubation. We explain the uh, procedure to the patient that we're going to extubate you and cover the patient again with a transparent plastic sheet nylon. And uh, you can do oral suction and closed suction at that time, uh, he's already covered with a plastic nylon, so it's uh, safe. Stop the ventilator. Then at this time, you have to deflate the cuff and remove the tube. Okay, if needed, you can use a nasal cannula or facial mask oxygen with surgical mask on top. Uh, if you really need to put him still on oxygen, remove the transparent plastic sheet from uh, outside to inside, including all the disposable equipment uh, inside it. Uh, I want to show you the video for that. Okay. Okay, I'm just looking for the video. Just give me some time. No, not this video, sorry. Uh, this one. Back to Khalid. Khalid now is looking for the excavation of the difficult cause of the COVID-19 ARDS. Currently, we are on visual support ventilation uh, with, if I were to only 21 person. We test the uh, cup and gas as well as uh, the leak. Which uh, uh, about that? Yeah, the patient is uh, first in prison and the patient have good cover and good uh, reflex, so he is ready for the situation. Excellent. So during the post of the excavation, uh, uh, I will get to uh, uh, cover the patient by the uh, plastic piece. Okay. Um, uh, but if you do, uh, uh, if you just find, uh, switch off the ventilator, 
Can you connect them to that mobile with condition of the viral valve? Okay. Well, can, can, we, can we do oral suction while I'm doing the IV? Okay, uh, can we do now drop suctioning to so we'll minimize the risk of the transmission of the infection? Now we are in closed system. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, right. We can deflate the tube. And you can take off the tube now. Yes, no problem to place it. Okay. And this is the face mask. Throw the ammo bag without bagging. Okay. Sure. There's okay. oxygen now. Excellent. Okay, can we win the FIO2 to 21 paces? Now the patient is starting 98. So, uh, uh, could you uh, can we win the FIO2? Okay. Yeah. If I will to spin into 21 person yes. and we'll check the office of the patient. Okay, we'll give him one minute. Saturation work. Excellent. So the saturation is still maintained. Okay, on if I will to 21 person, I think the situation is fine to provide for the patient only surgical mask uh, to minimize the risk of the infection. So we will like to connect it to the surgical mask. Okay, you can take off the bag mask. As we mentioned, if the patient still needs some oxygen, you can still give him nasal cannula or facial mask and uh, cover it with the uh, surgical mask on top of it. So going back to the presentation, so that's what we we uh, we trained the the staff on it, and uh, then we did like a small study uh, just to see how effective is the medical simulation. It's the effectiveness of medical simulation training on airway management of suspected or confirmed COVID-19 pediatric patients. Our objective of, from this study is to measure the effectiveness of medical simulation training and related video demonstration on airway management for confirmed or suspected COVID-19 pediatric patients. We used as a method is a questionnaire. We're done through the uh, Google uh, form and distributed electronically to candidates with inclusion criteria. Uh, we got preliminary responders, uh, 15 responders. Uh, almost the majority were nurses, 70%, and we have 10% were assistant consultant, 2% uh, respiratory therapists, and 2% were residents, 8% uh, fellows, and 8% were consultants. The question where uh, some were like, uh, did you attend the hands-on simulation training course on airway management? 50% uh, they did. Uh, did you attend the video demonstration on the airway uh, management or confirmed suspects? Yeah, 66% they did. Did you involve in airway management or real confirmed or suspected COVID uh, pediatric patient? And the answer were 50%. Uh, did you use the proper PPE? And 90% uh, were uh, replied as yes. During intubation, did you follow the learned precaution, including sheet and nylon coverage? And uh, luckily, around 80% they did. The role of the responders, we had like 15% um, almost they were a team leader, 15% were the airway management, and uh, almost 8% were for chest compression, and uh, uh, IV medication were almost uh, 35%. 
11 uh, percent uh, candidates were um, uh, uh, monitor or the commenting person and 15 were the percent of the runner, runner nurse. And the question where during back valve uh, mask ventilation, the method used was, and uh, uh, luckily like almost 63%, they were using the proper way, which is the VE and uh, 36 around, they have been using the CE uh, maneuver. Uh, was video learning scope used during uh, the intubation and 80% answered yes, they tried with the video learning scope. Was the ATT clamped before inflating and uh, the, the cuff of the AT tube? And luckily, like almost 76%, they did. What about discarding the soiled equipment, including the nylon? Was it done properly? And 84% they replied, that's yes. So this is really a very good sign. Doffing was done properly as learned, and 96% they said yes. During extubation, was PPE done properly? 87 replied as yes. So this is really a good number. Was protective sheet the nylon used during the procedure? And luckily that 95.8% they replied as yes. So this is really uh, confirmed that the course had a lot of um, addition to, to the patient. Sequence of proper extubation precaution, was it done properly? And it says that 91.7 yes. The time required for donning and doffing, was it longer than intubating non-COVID patients? And uh, obviously, yeah, 91% they said yes, because it's need more precaution during donning and doffing rather than during regular intubation. The procedure of intubation, is it more difficult and complex compared to intubation of non-COVID patients? Yeah, mostly they said, uh, yeah, 80% they find that, that the procedure is a little bit difficult than than regular intubation. And we can understand that because it has several steps and several precautions. The procedure for extubation, is it more difficult and complex compared to non-COVID? 56% uh, they said yes, and 20% they said it's almost similar. In general, simulation training, either hands-on or video demonstration had helped you in airway management for confirmed or suspected COVID-19 and majority they said yes, 91%. Uh, did you review your institute guideline for airway management for confirmed uh, uh, COVID-19 and 80% uh, they have been reviewing the uh, guideline. So in conclusion, this is as preliminary results only that simulation training, either hands-on or video demonstration on proper PPE precaution and airway management for confirmed and suspected COVID-19 plus the video demonstration barcode, adding it to the guideline itself of the Institute had improved the knowledge and the skills for medical practitioner on PPE precaution and airway management for confirmed or suspected COVID-19 during intubation and extubation. Thank you very much. I hope uh, I delivered the message uh, and we're really glad to have uh, simulation training that it's really helped as um, you can repeat it several times, you can um, uh, change or manipulate the, the scenario as needed. And uh, we are really lucky that we are living in this uh, kind of uh, century. Thank you very much. And I hope uh, have a good day. Thanks. If you have any questions, please let me know. Hello, Maria. Hey, with Doctor, I have to kill half ya. Allah, if you could look and wallah, have you to? I'm a tamam, more of a test. Could you tamam, halas, Allah, to kill half ya, shukran jazeera. Thank you. Yeah, I'm a salam. Nice.